Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 55 through 56 of Rui's Royal Love. It's time for the big hunting trip. There's a lot at stake here as the Emperor places a lot of importance on physical prowess and this is a huge opportunity to impress him. The women wait and see who will come back victorious and I could watch them go back and forth with their backhanded compliments for hours. As for the actual hunting, the animals aren't totally convincing but after Legend of Jinhuan I could never complain that this is bad CGI. The arrows are marked so the servants can keep track of who's getting what and scores will be tallied later. Fourth Prince stands out immediately. He's very athletic and a skilled archer. Fifth Prince also begins to show some of his real skills. Third Prince is there too. The Emperor spots a wild horse and decides to chase after it, hoping to tame it. Fourth Prince and Fifth Prince go after him. Fifth Prince is under orders from Highland to stick to Fourth Prince like glue because she's pretty sure he and his mother are up to something. Meanwhile, Yuncha is checking the grounds in the area and finds something amiss. Too late to do anything about it and just in time for the Emperor to come barreling through chasing that wild horse. It seems it led him right into a trap as someone sets off an arrow that comes right at him and forces him off his horse. It missed but unseen, Fourth Prince sets off another trap arrow that hits him in the leg. Now the Emperor is injured, defenseless and on the ground. The wild horse he was chasing comes back and it seems intent on trampling him. Before it can, Yun Che lassos the horse and manages to get on its back while Fifth Prince spotting the Emperor puts himself between the Emperor and the horse. At the last second, Fourth Prince finally shows himself and puts an arrow in the horse's neck, downing the horse and Yun Che. The Emperor is injured but safe. Fourth Prince and Fifth Prince take him home without so much as a thank you for Yun Che. Rude. Back at base camp, they chalk this incident up to an assassination attempt. They think the wild horse was bait for the Emperor and then the assassins started to shoot arrows at him. They think there were two would-be assassins because of the contraption that Fourth Prince had set up in the trees. And by the way, this is some pretty impressive engineering. The Emperor begins to grow suspicious of the servants around him and even his sons. It was all just a little too coincidental. After investigating and making 100% sure that Yuncha really did just happen to be in the area, he decides he needs a guard he can trust and decides to rehire Yuncha as an imperial guard. Later, the fifth prince discusses things with his moms. It's impossible to say anything now though because with the emperor so happy with fourth prince for killing the horse, it will simply look like jealousy on the fifth prince's part if he brings up any of his suspicions. Ah oh well, at least he got some kudos too for throwing himself between the horse and his father. The loser in all of this is Third Prince, who not only did nothing to save the Emperor, but also went overboard punishing the servants in the aftermath. He can never seem to do anything right. The curse of the Third Prince continues. So Yun Cha is back in the palace and I am so happy to see him, even with that mustache. Yin Wan gets the news of his return, now as a highly esteemed personal guard to the Emperor, and her reaction is just ridiculous. <laughs> Girl, you are not friends. You don't get to be happy that he's doing well. As part of his welcome package, the Emperor grants Yun Cha a wife. Well, pretty much forces her on him. Her name is Mao Qian and she's from a good family, blah blah blah, they have literally never met. Now that Yun Cha is an Imperial Guard, it's easier for him to meet with Ri. He can just head to her palace whenever, I guess. With all the lanes the Emperors go through to make sure that their women have no other options, guards have always seemed like such a huge oversight to me. The doctors are there as well, but there are safeguards. They have to clock in and out and specify which palace they're going to and for what. The guards on the other hand, I mean, I know Ri wouldn't, but remember how easily Yen Wan almost had a baby with him? Anyway, Ri congratulates him on his upcoming nuptials and introduces him to her son who is super cute. These two are such great friends. And Li Yu too, he's so happy to have Yun Cha back. To round out the reunions, Yun Cha runs into his BFF Yen Wan. Ling Da Ren. She congratulates him as well. And the conversation goes downhill from there. She's obviously lonely as hell with the Emperor ignoring her and wants to think that there's someone out there still pining for her. Meanwhile, Yun Cha has been over her for like a decade, but he also doesn't want to get married. Rather than chalk it up to his personal feelings though, Yen Wan is like, oh, he doesn't want to get married, so obviously he's still in love with me! <laughs> Yun Cha is married to Mao Qian. He didn't want to get married to begin with, but to make matters worse, she sucks. 
She immediately starts talking about how she's the boss in the relationship and that he should give all of the money he earns to her. Anyway, it wouldn't matter even if she were nice because Yuncha is clearly in love with Rui Ying. He sneaks out that night to take something out of a locked box. The pair of shoes Rui gave him as thanks for taking care of her in the cold palace so many years ago. He's spotted by his blushing bride, and though she doesn't know exactly what it is, you can just tell that this doesn't bode well. After saving the emperor from that horse, Fourth Prince has only gone up from there. He excels physically and academically, and the emperor makes his regard for him more and more obvious. Everyone starts to favor the Fourth Prince, and in an interesting look at how every facet of life is affected, the teachers refuse to teach the other princes anything if the fourth prince is absent, wanting to make sure he doesn't miss anything to the detriment of the other children. It's unfair, but Hailan and Rui caution fifth prince to ignore it all for now. Rui is on a roll now and gets pregnant again. The emperor has got a nice healthy number of sons now and is actually hoping for a princess. How about you take better care of the kids you have, bro? It's been forever, so you'll be forgiven if you forgot that 10th prince even exists. Even though sending him away was supposed to cure him, well, according to that sketchy astronomer, he's still very sick. Rather than realize that the premonition was nonsense and bring 10th Prince back home, the Emperor instead wonders if they're so ill-fated that even being on the same planet means one of them will die. Poor Shu of all people does not deserve this. The Emperor won't even allow her to leave the palace and see her son, and yet she never blames him for anything. <laughs> then on top of that, more bad news comes about the Empress Dowager's eldest daughter, Hang Chuo. She was married off to Zangaria years ago. If you remember, that was a major reason why the Empress Dowager was so unwilling to let her younger daughter, Hang Ti, get married to a faraway place too. <laughs> There was a rebellion in Zangaria, and now Hang Chuo's husband, the previous leader, is dead. The new guy in charge has sent a letter pledging his allegiance to the crown, but also requesting a marriage between himself and the now widowed Hang Chuo. Awkward position all around. The new king wants to marry her to prove his standing, and then there would probably be peace, but the emperor would be forcing his sister to marry the man who killed her husband. And that's not even touching the fit the emperor's dowager will throw. But the only other option would be to go to war. By the way, did you notice we're now in stage 3 of the drama according to the emperor's facial hair. Close to the end now. Speaking of close to the end, 10th prince... <laughs> Speaking of close to the end, 10th Prince takes a turn for the worse. Since the Emperor won't see her, Shu goes to see the Empress Dowager and begs for permission to go and see her son. Never want to give out anything for free, the Empress Dowager says she can help her with her son issue if she can help her with her daughter issue. Shu loves the Emperor more than anything and has never wanted him to feel like she's manipulating him for his mom, but she also loves her son. With no choice, Shu goes to beg the emperor to bring Hang Chuo back to the capital so mother and daughter can be reunited. The emperor killed Mei and sterilized Qing for doing the Empress Dowager's bidding. Shu knows that what she's doing could be suicide, but she has no choice if she wants to see her son before he dies. At first, I wondered why she didn't just tell him that the Empress Dowager was forcing her to do this. After all, unlike Mei and Qing, her tie to the Empress Dowager is not a secret. But then, even if he didn't blame her for speaking up for his mom, I still don't think he would then let her go and see her son, and that's really all she wants. The Empress Dowager put her in a really terrible position here. Of course, the Empress Dowager doesn't stop there, putting pressure on the pregnant Rui as well. The Emperor has been avoiding her like the plague, and the Empress Dowager wants Rui to think of a way to get him to come and see her so she can at least plead her case. So Rui goes to see him and in five minutes manages to convince him to see his mom, even if it is only to give her the bad news. And she gets him to allow 10th Prince back into the palace. It's so evident in scenes like this that no one can match Rui's relationship with the Emperor. She knows him like the back of her hand and knows just what to say to get him to stop acting like an idiot. So, the hunting trip. Was this a good plan? If the plan had gone perfectly, Fourth Prince would have been the only one there to save the Emperor, and I guess would have been more favored going forward, but thinking long term, the perfect timing just looks so suspicious. Plus, it could so easily have been a fatal shot to the heart or the head. 
I call bullshit if you tell me the engineer behind this knew exactly where a man on horseback would be at the moment the arrow was released. You can't plan for that. I mean, I guess everything worked out in the end, so good for them. At least it brought Yuncha back. It is at this exact point, Yuncha getting married, that I firmly put my foot down and say he is in love, romantic love, with Rui 100%. Before this, I can totally understand the people on the platonic love boat, but he's got his job back, he can see Rui every day, she's safe, happy, and pregnant. A friend would have zero reason to be thinking about her right now. I mean, sure, he doesn't like his new wife, but to be pining over the boots she gave him on the day he gets married? What else could that mean but I wish I were marrying Rui? Till next time, thanks for watching.